Welcome to our coverage of the 2021 Professionals Gravel and Tar Classic and Gravel and Tar La Femme. Starting in Fielding, New Zealand's most beautiful town for 16 years running and finishing in Palmerston North, the race takes in 87 kilometres of the Manawatu region's gravel and tar. COVID-19 has had a devastating impact on sport the world over. We spoke with teams, riders and support crews as to how they were affected and how they prepared for the Gravel and Tar 2021. Uh, it's been huge actually when you think about, um, you know, I, I work for a European team um, on the World Tour and yeah, racing has basically been halted, you know, so it's sort of everybody doesn't really know where they're headed or what direction they're going and whereas, whereas here in New Zealand, like, um, it's only ourselves and, and the Australians that actually have the ability to race. I think uh, you know it's it's important to look at the positives, and it's 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 good that New Zealand can race because anywhere else in the world we can't. Um, okay, yes, we're we're missing the the international competition and, and the ability to, to be able to to go and race, but um, I think yeah, it's, it's really good that uh, we can actually have these races. We've had a lot of training camps. Uh, we have had some racing, not a lot. Um, but yeah, overall, I mean, just keeping the guys focused on on what they're, what they're supposed to be doing and diet, training, um, it hasn't been as bad as it, it could have been. I mean, we're in a great country, so we're quite lucky in some ways, so better than most. Uh, it's definitely made a bit of a change. I mean, we went into lockdown, I mean, just I guess under a year ago now, and that was kind of when we were thinking we were going to be gearing up for the Olympics. and. Everything's been pushed back a little bit, but we're still uh, still tracking for it. Uh, we've kind of missed out some of the racing, like the Oceania and racing in Australia this year. And we had one of the camps uh, planned for this year as well, which we just had to um, cancel two days before Auckland went for the second lockdown. So it was quite scary in the beginning, you know, didn't know what was going to happen. Um, racing got cancelled from late February onwards, so basically just got down to training, being able to fly back to New Zealand from America in September, um, able to race and train life back to normal, which is really cool. So you've recently signed professional team rally women cycling. Um, how did that come about and what are you looking forward to this year? Um, it was a real surprise. It was just a Facebook message. Um, I'm very excited to be part of it and hopefully go to, to Europe and to America and race as much as I can. And, gain as much experience as I can, so yeah. Every opportunity to race, the team's keen to be involved in. So having three riders in New Zealand over the summer was an opportunity they just didn't want to miss. It wasn't all bad for us. We were in a pretty fortunate situation where, you know, we were able to race in the year. I mean, we're two and a half months. You know, ultimately they were a pretty small price to pay to, you know, to be able to, to work and, and, you know, and to, to race and to, you know, provide entertainment for the rest of the world. Uh, it's going to be really, really tough. Uh, race this, I think this is my fifth time now. And I was just saying to the guys before, you never come into the finish line still feeling good. You're uh, usually at rock bottom. But yeah, I like to ride from the front and um, yeah, just try, yeah, get out of trouble, even if it means having the nose in the wind a bit. We're real excited actually, yeah, it's going to be a big day. Bit of a course change, a um, bit longer now. So yeah, it's going to be real hard, hard man's race, so real excited. And even the hard men and women of the Gravel and Tar 2021 were up against it. With an extended course, challenging wind gusts of up to 80 kilometres an hour, and a daunting run of climbs over the steep rutted gravel roads out of the Pohongana Valley, everybody knew the 2021 Gravel and Tar was a new beast to be conquered. I'll hand you over to our commentary team, Steve Stannard and Astrid Van Uden. We picked the race up in fielding, uh, and you can see this it's still neutralised. The field of about 30 riders. Who's your pick for today, Astrid? Well, Steve, I think we're very lucky to have a very talented group of riders here today for the Professionals Gravel and Tyler Femme. Uh, we've got the likes of mountain bike a national champion Josie Wilcox, who's going to be very handy on the gravel. And I believe if it comes down to a sprint finish, you can't take your eyes off New Zealand crit champ Olivia Ray. Copper says drop the flag, and the girls are on their way. The wind's blowing from left to right, it's a northwesterly. Uh, I expect it to fan out across the road. Uh, the girls look like they're uh, pushing reasonably hard to start with, but the racing's really uh, not started properly yet. Astrid, you interviewed the girls prior to the race. What was the vibe? Uh, Steve, I think everyone was super excited to be here, um, especially after the year that we had 
um, with COVID-19 and the pandemic. Everyone's very grateful to um, yourself and the rest of the team for organising the race and just really excited and amped to be here and, and get some racing under the belt to start the 2021 season. The bunch is still together along Spur Road. There's a tailwind. The first gravel sector comes up soon and I think the bunch will split soon after that. Olivia Ray won last month's National Crit Champs. Do you think this course is too hilly for her? Well, Steve, Olivia's a very versatile rider, but I don't think she's had too much experience on the gravel. First gravel sector's about four kilometres long. Those with some downhill skills are going to be an advantage because it does go downhill. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens at the bottom. So Steve, do any of these riders change their bikes from their typical road racing bike for an event like Gravel and Tire? Oh, look, not usually. Um, what they might do is change their tyres, maybe change their wheels. You can see here that uh, um, getting out of the saddle is a real drama. Uh, as soon as you get out, you lose a bit of traction and, uh, and you lose uh, bike lengths. Yeah, tyre choice is really important in the way you ride your bike. And we can see there's a lot of gaps opening up through that first gravel section and downhill, so it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. We're on Pahongana Valley Road. The bunch is largely together. There's a few stragglers. They must have uh, lost a bit of ground on the gravel. They're working hard to catch up though. We can see some of the favourites up the front of the race here with the New Zealand national team leading. Riley McMullen's up there from the Andy Schleck Continental team. Uh, she came third in 2019, so I'm sure she'll be looking for a good result today as well. We're coming into Pahongana Village now. They're about to turn left and, uh, and go up the second gravel section, um, which contains a climb. There you can see they're on the climb already, and it's really starting to split up. This really looks like it could be a select group of riders getting out the front of this race. It's such a crucial moment of the course. Coming over the top of the climb now, there seems to be a selection of about, I think, eight riders. Astrid, you, you can, can you see who we've got there? It looks like we've got Kirsty McCullum and Henrietta Christie possibly leading the pack there with Bronwyn McGregor, Josie Wilcox, Riley McMullen, Alicia Evans, Charlotte Lucas and Olivia Ray. Yeah, that's a pretty strong group. It is a very, very strong group. I think this, is, this could be it for today. Yeah, these two pairs have been dropped in the climb. I wonder if they'll be able to get back on. As we're about to hit the bitumen again, that group of eight leading women seem to be working very cohesively. Yeah, but I can see Katie Richards at the back. She's chasing pretty hard too. And is that Georgia Danford with her? I believe it is, Steve. Coming down to complete the lap, there's a group of 10. Katie Richards has gone straight to the front and now she's driving the bunch. As we head along Spur Road for the second to last gravel section, it looks like Charlotte Lucas is really driving that lead group. Yeah, there's a few in trouble as well. I can see, I think it's Georgia Danford on the back and Rolly McMullen's having to work pretty hard just to stay in touch. Looks like we've got nine left now as they take the left hand turn, they go towards Ashurst as a howling tail when they're going to reach speeds of nearly 60 kilometres an hour for the next five or six k. And there's an attack off the front, it looks like it could be Henrietta Crumb Velo Project. I think she's going to have trouble staying away here, you know, the, the girls look like they've got the bit between the teeth. They're not that far from home and they've got to be doing, uh, as I say, about 50 kilometres an hour. Um, but anyway, anything can happen and sometimes it does. And Olivia Ray is really driving that chase group. I wonder what their team plan is today. see them now taking the long sweeping descents into Ashurst. Henrietta Christie's still away and that looks like Josie Wilcox uh, 231 trying to get across just before the next gravel sector. 
heading into the gravel pit, the final gravel section of this race. Josie Wilcox must be feeling at home because she is doing a lot of work. Yeah, I wonder if that's wise as a, uh, as a headwind too, and uh, oh, she's just got to be careful um, because these girls are going to sit on her and uh, do her over in a sprint. Coming out of the gravel pit, it does look like it's split up. There's four in front and one chasing. That looks like Riley McMullen. And she seems she's gotten back on. Um, that front group, Astrid, um, you know, it looks like it might be a sprint. Who's going to win? You'd have to put your money on Olivia Ray at this stage, but she's doing a lot of work. And we see Olivia Ray's leading out the sprint. That's pretty early. I don't know if she's be able to keep this up. She looks strong, but it's a long way to go yet, into a headwind. She's looking around, I think she's got this. She is the New Zealand Criterium Champion, and she showed us her sprinting prowess back in December in Christchurch. Yeah, look, I think she's got that. You know, kudos to her. What a great ride. Chapeau, Olivia Ray. Huge, huge win for the young 22-year-old from Auckland. She's signed her first professional contract, racing for Rally Cycling. In America, she has got a big future. Olivia Ray, New Zealand national teams, just won the Professionals Gravel and Tyler Femme race. This currently makes her the number one female rider in the world on the UCI rankings. How does that feel? Pretty damn good. <laughs> the course was really fun, um, but towards the end it was really sketchy, like half the field um, fell over basically. And so myself, Charlotte, and another teammate and another two girls stayed up there and came to a sprint which is what I do so it was, it was really great yeah it was such a tough day I punched it on the third gravel sector and chased for like 20k managed to get back on like managed to get myself back into the race after a big chase and it was awesome to finish it off with Olivia in first and me in second it was actually really hard out there the um, climbs were really hot and on the gravel it was pretty sketchy so yeah it was really hard and you've come third again, obviously hoping for better, but are you happy with how it's played out and how the body's kind of feeling at the moment? Yeah, I'm sure after a couple of hours I'll, I'll be happy with third, but yeah, I'm pretty disappointed to miss out on the line for second and then, but yeah, really good ride by Liv and Charlotte. Let's go back to fielding for the start of the sixth edition of the Professionals Gravel and Tar Classic. They're about to get underway, so let's rejoin our commentary team. And we're back in fielding for the start of the men's race. Steve, who are your picks for favourites today? Well, look, I don't think you can go past uh, last year's winner, Hayden McCormick. Um, and Luke Mudgeway as well. He's been on the podium twice before, so I think he's probably going to be pretty confident. Uh, I think my pick really is going to be um, Yumbo Visma development rider, Finn Fisher Black. He showed some pretty good form last week at the New Zealand Cycle Classic. Racing now, and there's uh, some attacks from the start. The wind's blowing right to left. Um, I reckon it'll go straight in the gutter and probably split up. There's a couple of riders off the back already. It looks like about three groups have formed just as they're about to turn right onto Spur Road. We've got a strong front group formed and it looks like George Bennett is attacking on the left side of the road. It's great to have George at the race here this year. He's a world tour rider. He had an incredible 2020 season with a win at the Grand Prix de Mont and second at Elon Badia, the best classics result by a Kiwi ever in the World Tour. Well, I think he's going to be pretty closely watched today though. A little group that's just dangling off the front, but it'll come back together pretty quickly. It looks like it has already. Astrid, who are the strongest teams here today? It would have to be the New Zealand national team and the Black Spoke Pro Cycling team who are UCI registered. You can't go past those two teams. They're definitely ones to watch. They're just about to hit the first gravel sector at speed. I think it's going to break up pretty quickly here. And you can see there the dust that's come up, coming up from the convoy. Yeah, and it's breaking up. You can see these blokes have got some pretty good descending skills, but if you're an elite cyclist, that's got to be part of your toolkit. Thirty-five kilometres into the racing and some of the riders out the back are desperately trying to get back on before the next gravel section. Yeah, that's coming up soon and it's going to be pretty hard. I think it'll split up pretty quickly. There's a big bunch at the bottom of the gravel climb, but I think there'll only be a small bunch at the top. 
climbing up gravel, uh, it, it takes a fair bit of skill. You can't get out of the saddle because you lose traction. You've got to actually climb in the saddle and that's quite hard. There's a lot of corrugations on the road too, so that makes it extra difficult. You can see it's starting to really line out now and people are losing ground as we get to the top of the climb. At the top of the climb we've got five riders who have ridden away from the peloton. Regan Goff, Luke Mopway, Drew Christensen, George Jackson and Hayden McCormick. Hot in the Heels is another group and it does look like it's come back together. This is the last bit of the uh, second gravel sector and uh, it's pretty quick. Um, pretty soon they're going to hit the bitumen again and uh, I think it'll just stick together a while. It's going to uh, end up with a, a large uh, front bunch and there you can see Hayden McCormack uh, eating dust. Steve, the Manawatu is known for its wind. What role is that going to play today? Yeah, the Manawatu gets the roaring 40s. What it does is it means that uh, if there's a side wind, the, it's the races they've thrown in the gutter uh, or it's thrown across the road. Um, as they go down Taranui Road here, you can see it's sort of been thrown in the gutter. Um, some guys are struggling at the back there. And it looks like we've got three riders off the front of the lead group. I think that's four, Astrid. Uh, Luke Mudgeway, I think, is tucked behind. Uh, might be Josh Byrne. It looks like Ryan Christensen, Glenn Haddon, uh, and yeah, Josh Burnett and uh, Luke Mudgeway. Yeah, the windy weather's produced another group of four, uh, slightly off the back of the front group, and that looks like Ethan Vat driving the front. There's our lead group looking very comfortable as they head down to Spur Road for the second time. Look at that, Finn Fisher Black seems to have come from nowhere to join those front two. Gee, that man's got some potential. As the former world record holder in the individual pursuit on the track and a specialist time trialist, you would think that he would be good at bridging across solo. Yeah, he's got plenty of motor, that boy. Finn's sister Neve won the Gravel and Taylor Femme last year and off the back of that she got a uh, fully fedged professional contract in Europe. Sadly, um, she couldn't come back this year because of uh, the COVID restrictions, but you know, we might see her next year, I hope. the difficult Finnis Road climb for the second time. Uh, the race is still fractured um, and looks like that might be Ethan Bat at the front. And we've got three following uh, and that's Glenn Haddon uh, and I think um, Drew Christensen. Over the top, the four are together. Glenn Haddon's driving the pace. Glenn Haddon from Wanganui is a former uh, downhill mountain bike champion. If anyone can ride gravel, he can. Uh, he's also a very, very good time trialist. We're halfway through the race at this point and this group's working really well together. I wonder if they'll be the selection, Steve. Oh, look, there's a long way to go, Astrid. And, and you know, the, uh, the race is, uh, I think, going to be won and lost in about the last 20 or 30k. I think there's too many riders in the, in the peloton back there that are too hungry for this win to let them get too far ahead. Back to the top of the Finnis Road climb and there's been a reshuffle. George Bennett's in that front group. Yeah, he's managed to claw his way back and, uh, you know, I think we've got to, he's in, he's in with a chance. This is an elite group of riders, Steve. Some of the best in the race. Yeah, that's right. This is, the selection's going to be uh, made for me. The winner, the winner's going to come from this group. You've got McCormick, you've got Gate, you've got local hero Campbell Stewart. This is a big group. Yeah, look, George Bennett, you can see him being blown around by the wind there. He's struggling a little bit. He has not done much gravel racing in the past. In fact, he's only done one Strata Bianchi in his whole professional career. Yeah, and I dare say the gravel in uh, the Manor 2 is a lot harder than Italy. Back onto the big long stretch of bitumen before we hit uh, Ashurst and the uh, gravel pit. One rider away, I wonder who that is. It looks like Aaron Gate from Black Spoke Pro Cycling. Could we see another win by a New Zealand Criterium champion? There's two that are not far behind him there. I think this could be a race of uh, three. Look, no, there's the bunch there. I can see Campbell Stewart. The race isn't finished yet. 
It is far from over. Look, Aaron's still in front, and as we hit the gravel pit, there's two black spoke riders ahead. That could be Mudgeway, I think. And they're being chased by two riders from the New Zealand national team, Fisher Black and Christensen. The front two have got a good gap, and there's only about 5k of bitumen to go. What happens now, Steve? Are they going to work together or how is this going to play out? Well, I think they would have had a bit of a chat and uh, they'll decide uh, between themselves who's going to win. You know, this is a black spoke win, it's not an individual win. It's an important day for black spoke racing after very limited racing in 2020. It looks like they're going for a 1-2 again today, as they did last year. The pair grab each other's hands, congratulate each other. Let's see who crosses the line first. And it's a double day for the New Zealand Criterion Champions with Aaron Gate taking the win. Well done to Black Spoke Pro Cycling. Aaron Gate of uh, Black Spoke Professional Cycling, winner of the 2021 Professionals Gravel and Tar Classic event. How was it out there today? Uh, it was hard. To <laughs> one word probably sums it up. Uh, it was, uh... Yeah, it was just a windy, grippy day, like lots of uh, cat and mouse out of there on the road, but it was fun racing and um, yeah, pretty stoked to get a win. Oh, I haven't raced that hard for a long time. Um, yeah, that extra 30k really, really hurt a lot. Um, but yeah, I was just, just tried to race at the front all day. So when you're coming into the finish with a teammate, how do you kind of decide who's going to take the win? Oh, Gady told me a bit to a bit more than I told him coming back home, so I just said he can have it. Um, yeah, I've won the race before and got second twice now, so. Uh, yeah, it was probably one of the hardest races I've ever done in my life. Um, just that wind and it was just constant attacking the whole day. We we almost had it at the end, but obviously uh, well done to Black Spook to, to, to pull it off, yeah. All right, George Bennett, uh, Yumbo Visma professional cycling team. How'd you find your first gravel in Tart? Oh, it was horrible, yeah. Um, I was under the pump early on, and uh, yeah, I started feeling a bit better after about three hours, and that lasted for about 10 minutes, and then felt pretty bad the rest of the way, so yeah. It was just, uh, it was good though, I needed it. It was exactly what I wanted, exactly what I came here for, just a hard hit out. The worst part was coming off the river trail, and it was like rubble, that was the worst part, but very fun still. That um, extra 30k hurt a lot. Um, yeah, the gravel was brutal, the climb was hard. Uh, yeah, just tried to race at the front all day, and um, yeah, it ended up going pretty well for us, so we're really happy with how it went. You know, with the gravel, the, the groups were quite small uh, from the start, so there wasn't a big group, so I guess we could all kind of fit across the road in the crosswind. Um, but yeah, it made it hard, I think, uh, on the gravel when a gust of wind hit, yeah, threw a few riders off the road. Um, so you have to just always be attentive and always be ready for a gust. Um, yeah, you have to watch it on the gravel when they're really exposed up after finish road. Um, but yeah, it was a, a lot of elements today and you just gotta, just gotta keep going K1, K at a time. Yeah, it's probably only um, two races I've done that compared to this, both in Belgium, but they were Gravel was not as gnarly as what you managed to find for us today, so um, oh, I just had an absolute ball. You went wrong in saying it's uh, it's a fun race to do. Counts when you're at the point you end too, but um, oh, it was just some good fun racing. A um, bit of banter out there on the road and um, a bit of cat and mouse coming in towards the finish, and just it was <laughs> definitely not an easy race to win. I had to really empty the tank today to, to get that win, and it was a uh, cup maker. All the more rewarding, although I can't say I enjoyed that head win for the last 20k. It's been quite great. It's one of the toughest races I've done. About six months ago, you asked me what kind of course we should do, should we make it the longer? And I said yes, and kind of regret that now. So, uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was good there. That ends our coverage of the 2021 Professionals Gravel and Tar UCI events. Thanks for joining us, and we'll look forward to your company again next year.